everybody is self-interested. Why knowing this is important in your criminal case in Washington State. So if you're interested in the criminal law or just how we all work, stay tuned because this is the video for you. My name is Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. I have a law firm that's been defending people charged with crimes for more than 20 years. And I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. There's not a lot out there. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. So now I'm just gonna jump right into it. Why is a criminal defense attorney talking about these type of psychological things? How everybody is self-interested. Well, the reason why I'm talking about it is in the 20 plus years I've been doing defense work, knowing what motivates deciders and what motivates witnesses and what motivates victims and even defendants and parents of defendants and everybody is really key in trying to get results in criminal cases with the least amount of risk to our clients or to defendants in this case, talking about criminal law. So you, if you realize that everybody in the system is self-interested, it will help you take some take some juice or some sting out of the things that you might need to do to help your criminal case. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, many times uh, a client uh, of, of ours might say something like, yes, but I'm, I'm innocent, there's no evidence against me. How could, how could the prosecutor go forward with this? I mean, shouldn't they know that uh, I'm innocent or that the person complaining against me has every reason to lie? And that makes logical sense. I mean, shouldn't they know that? Shouldn't the prosecutor know that? But that's treating the prosecutor and the system sort of like a machine, right? Um, if a machine was deciding things, then we could just feed in the data for you and feed in the data against you and the machine would balance it and decide what to do. But machines are not making decisions and you need to know this so you can lower your level of frustration when dealing with the criminal system because it's frustrating. It absolutely is. But a prosecutor has a whole lot of different factors going into what they're doing. And I, I know this because I was a prosecutor for seven years prior to being a defense attorney for the last 20 plus, right? So a prosecutor, um, although they're supposed to be interested, right, in whether or not you know, you're actually guilty of something and in, in certain times they will take the time to look into that. For the most part, a prosecutor is just a person who has all the cases in the courtroom. They might have 50 or 60 or could have 100, depending on the day, and they're just trying to get by, right? They're trying to survive in their job. They can't know that much about every case. They can't spend hours trying to figure out if the uh, woman or man complaining against you is lying. Uh, they may not even uh, take the time to listen to what your attorney is saying. There's different factors that go in to that prosecutor's behavior and their actions. They're self-interested like the rest of us. They want to be able to go home, uh, you know, feeling sane. They want to make sure they don't make a mistake and dismiss the wrong case. If they take a chance and dismiss your case, what if they're wrong and then you go kill someone later? Well, that's going to be on them, right? The press is going to be knocking on their door. Their boss is going to say, why did you do that? So in uh, trying to deal with how long a case takes and the frustrations you might face and all the questions you might ask your attorney about how come this is still going on, how come they just can't see the truth, you have to realize that um, in their mind, it may not be their job to, to do it that way, right? It's their job to present the state's case. It's their job, hopefully, to try to do the right thing, but it takes some time to get them in the mental position where they feel safe enough in their own self-interest preservation to try to decide what's right to do. When I was a prosecutor, I was always worried. What if I, you know, I did something wrong? Are the police going to be mad at me as the prosecutor if I, you know, um, dismiss a case or reduce a case? Is uh, the alleged victim? going to be mad and complain, right? Um, these type of things. And while uh, we should be above that, as humans, we all are uh, reactive to threats against us. And that's one thing that can happen with prosecutors. The same thing happens with the judges in the system, right? 
the judges are either elected or appointed to rule on evidence, to make decisions about sentencing and continuances and motions. Um, and, you know, what we talk about a lot in here is no contact orders, about whether or not a no contact order should be maintained. And so I can say plenty of times we hear from uh, uh, alleged victims on the phone who call up my firm and they're talking about how upset they are that they're not being heard and that uh, they're being turned into children by the judges and that why is the judge maintaining an order when I don't want one? You know, I need my loved one at home. I need my wife at home or my husband at home, um, that type of thing. And, and what I often tell people, well, just like anyone else in the system and all of us humans, the judge is also self-interested right? Um, they have a job to do, but they need to protect themselves against wrong decisions. They need to feel a certain way about how they're doing their job and what their version of the protecting the public is. And so we have to take everything with a grain of salt. And that's why I'm putting out this video is to try to be patient and realize it's other factors besides facts that, um, often turn what the decisions are. It's getting the person who has the power to make the decision in a place where either their ego can feel safe to make the decision you need, uh, their, their you know, uh, fight or flight uh, response isn't gonna go off by making a decision, and also hopefully maybe they feel like they're doing the right thing in the long run through everything that's happened in the case. This also goes true for police officers in the system. I often get questions, is an officer gonna arrest me? You know, is an officer gonna come knocking on my door? Are they gonna show up at my work? What's gonna happen? Well, it varies, right? It varies based upon what's in the self-interest of that officer at that time. There's some things we can't predict. We have, you know, sometimes certain departments are more aggressive because that's what their bosses want and certain are not as aggressive. So. Uh, I don't need to go into that too much here, but I'm just trying to point out that each person in the system is self-interested. Um, that goes for your defense attorney, right? Uh, we might have a self-interest of uh, wanting to feel good about doing a good job, right, in such a hard job. Uh, the people have, including attorneys, have financial self-interest. They have, uh, they want to look a certain way. They want to get a certain thank you. It's all different types of things. So you have to think about that when uh, you're trying to you know, uh, put motives on people's behavior. And treatment agencies. Treatment agencies also are a particular one where self-interest can play uh, a part, right? You know, some agencies will recommend more treatment for a financial reason or because they just really have a different approach to treatment that they think more people need help than another agency who might think less people need help. And so it's typically not personal. And the bottom line is, you know, you don't want to take anything personally that's going on in the system um, because all these actors are sort of living in their own world, in their own movie, with their own motivations, their own reasons for acting. And uh, hopefully if you have a decent attorney or if you're working on, working on your own, whoever's making the decisions can keep that in mind and trying to decide what's next, trying to decide what the, one of the, the best thing to do is, and uh, also how to be patient. Again, being patient, and realizing that everybody who is involved in the outcome of the case um, is looking out for themselves in a certain way. That doesn't mean a bad way. It could mean a good way. And um, there's lots of good ways that people use their self-interest as well to help cases, people's desire to help others, people in the medical profession, lots of people in the service industry, pretty much all of us um, are looking uh, to help others at times as a way to you know, feel good about the world and ourselves. So this has been a little bit out there for a video topic, I realize, but I just want you to really keep that in mind that what moves cases is not machine logic, right? Machine logic has nothing to do with outcomes in criminal cases. It's much more soft skills, it's much more art, it's much more psychology and so uh, you know trust in your attorney if they seem <laughs> to know what they're doing and try to do what they ask so i hope you found this helpful if so please like and please subscribe more people will get the help they need and even more importantly if you are run into a criminal problem if you think you need some help again i have a law firm in linwood washington we've been defending people charged with crimes for more than 20 years all throughout washington state 
and we understand this type of stuff. So you can give us a call. If it seems like a case we can help with, our team will set you up with an appointment. We'll uh, listen to what happened. We'll identify a way forward and we will be there for you. Thank you. Thank you.